channel yourself. Hmm. Just feel your energy is going to the moon. I'm gonna count from one to three. On the count of three, you will be able to have your conscious awareness be on this planet. One, going to the moon. Two, almost there. And three, you are at this place. Take your time. It's rocky and there's a very, it's like a really bright light. Uh huh, bright light. Let me know where is the, the source of the light. And see if uh, there's anyone can guide you. There's somebody like in a spacesuit. Okay. If you can describe this being. Just looks like a person in like a white moon suit. Uh huh. It's Beautiful. waving at me. Okay. So let's find out what he will say to you. He asks, what would you like to know? Uh-huh. Tell him. You want to know more about this planet. And if year 1969, Apollo, Apollo 11, if has really landed on the moon, we didn't land on the moon then, but we have been to the moon since then. Let him explain in details. In 1969, that was a hoax. Uh-huh. However, we have, human beings have made it to the moon since then. Uh-huh. So what happened at that, that time? It was a hoax to, to fool the Soviet Union. Uh-huh. So when was the, the human first time landed on the moon? 1982. And so what this planet is for? There's no water or life here. Who is uh, the original being on the moon? Or, or this is a place for something else? There were never beings living here. Okay. It's never been inhabited. He says there's been various bases here from different civilizations. Uh -huh. Have just had bases so they, they want somewhere to be stationed near the earth. So what is the reason? By the way, what is this being's name? Right, so let me just talk to Jeffrey uh, directly, which will be easier. Um, so I'm gonna let you switch with Jeffrey. I'm gonna count to three on the count of three. You will be Jeffrey's energy. One, two, and three. Hi, Jeffrey. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Um, I appreciate your information. So, um, before I ask anything else, uh, so what is your role here? I'm not here permanently, but I, I am a human soul who has seen some of the bases on Earth or on the Moon in the past. Yes. <laughs> so I take this form sometimes uh, to explain more okay. about the Moon. So you are just some type of energy. Yes. And when I ask this question and you feel you are the right person can answer those questions. Correct. Oh, very good. So, um, yeah, we, we really, uh, as human, we don't know much about the moon. Um, so what, what is the, what kind of role the moon is playing to Earth, to the growth of planet Earth? It's more vital than you realize because it, it affects the magnetic fields on Earth and the the tides and the seasons and the the energies on your body are all uh -huh. you know in, in connection with the moon as a natural entity the moon is also it, it's a place that various civilizations extraterrestrial civilizations have established bases here as a place that is near earth but they're not on earth uh, but they can be nearby if they need to work on the physical dimensions of their ships uh-huh. But why they chose a moon instead of other planets? Because the moon is closer to the Earth. So they are doing, the, those species, they do some work on Earth? Correct. Oh. So, for example, let's say Pleiadians. Yes. Uh -huh. Octorians. Correct. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I heard that the moon is almost like a, the air, airport, but for crafts. That's 
uh, one way to describe it. Uh, so there's uh, one part of the the, the moon that um, from Earth we can never see that part, the back of the moon. And there's anything specific there? If there's a ship that's very large, very visible, that's where we tend to do more uh, of the work. Uh, so it's kind of on purpose. Correct. Uh, so we will not be able to see that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Anything else that you can tell us about this uh, planet that we don't? It wasn't made by accident. When the Earth was made, the Moon was made very specifically as well um, to help kind of keep your planet functioning uh, as a natural whole. The, the natural forces on your planet would not work without mm -hmm. the Moon. So uh, let's say Earth was created 4.6 billion years ago by this uh, species called Ashanti. So Moon was, is in a way is newer than Earth. A little bit newer, but it was about the same time. Is it also created by them? Or? Correct. Ah, oh, I see. I was going to ask. Um, in one of my <coughs> um, ayahuasca journey, I felt that I was on the moon, or maybe when I was doing meditation, uh, I'm not too sure, and I felt there is a female type of um, energy or being. Um, she was like kind of uh, squeezing my cheek and I'm not too sure is there such being can you say again um, there's a like female type of being um, on the moon when I was um, either maybe at, uh, when I was in my psychedelic journey I feel I was there and then uh, this being came to kind of greet me and she said hi and then she was squeezing my cheek. There have been female beings on earth I mean on the moon yeah over time um, from many different species. Oh, I remember she introduced herself and she said I'm the moon lady but they are those female energies? Yes yeah they are. Um, but again, from, from many different species, I don't know that there's like one species in particular, I'm not sure. Um, what else? Um, anything else, uh, kind of an interesting thing about this planet or events? <clears throat> it's not terribly eventful here. Um, it, it's a place, as I said, multiple species have been here. There's never been any conflict here. It's usually, um, you know, species who are doing work on Earth and they have this additional place to stop. Uh -huh. um, it was notable the first time that humans made it to the actual moon and realized mm -hmm. that it was populated already. Um, so when they came, and let's say in 1982, so do they realize that they are, you know, extraterrestrials here. So certain people within the government had known that there were extraterrestrials, but it wasn't common knowledge. So some of the first to arrive were very surprised. And they, you know, they were told to keep it very secret, that the public couldn't know that it was inhabited. So let's say if uh, they are going to, uh, when, uh, when, when the human are landing on the moon in the future, uh, what will happen to them? They will be allowed to do some experiments? Well, now that humans are aware, and there's also, you know, a base there. If humans want to, you know, come, they can. The government is aware that so it's let's here. So, let's say the Russian uh, government also knows? Correct. Uh, there is a, a, a story about a, a Chinese uh, a astronaut. So, when he was in the spaceship, um, and I think he heard some uh, strange noise, like it sounds like someone is knocking on the door. Do you know? What happened at that time? When he was on the moon? No, when he was on the way to the moon, in a in a in a spaceship. I don't know. And so this is something that people talk about. All right. So there's nothing. So on the moon, uh, things usually are organized and peaceful. Correct. And there's anyone that is kind of monitoring things on moon, on the moon. The Greys and the Asasani, um, Asasani monitor fairly closely uh -huh. because they're most interested in what's going on on Earth. Let's see. So Asasani is uh, this uh, planet is in a, like a sixth dimensional. Correct. 
All right. Um, so I uh, um, appreciate your explanation and this information. And maybe we'll be able to have another uh, conversation in the near future. You're very welcome. Thank you. I want you to channel through the energy of Earth, to channel through Gaia's energy. And I'm going to count to three. On the count of three, you will be able to become Gaia's vibration. One. We're moving forward to that vibration. Two, almost there, and three. Am I speaking with Gaia? Speaking. Um, thank you very much for this communication. And uh, before I ask anything, you tell us uh, what is uh, your feeling now about holding this planet and. Uh, and the 8 billion people on it. There's enough room and enough resources for all. Mm -hmm. It's not enough. There are enough. Uh, you uh -huh. just have to use them wisely and give it back to the planet. Mm -hmm. There's more than enough space, more than enough resources mm -hmm. for everyone. So I are happy to s sustain as much life as possible. We wish you would treat Earth more gently, with more care. So what did we do, or what we have done that hurt you the most? You enslave and confine so many animals in slaughterhouses. They contaminate the environment all around them, pollute the water and pollute the air, and harm the animals themselves. Billions and billions of animals with no respect no concern for their well-being and no concern for how it harms the planet. It's mass destruction and it's not efficient for feeding yourselves either. Because yeah, as a human we don't have to eat meat. You don't have to eat meat and you certainly don't have to eat the large amount that so many people consume and they want it mass produced for cheap. That, oh. This mass consumption of meat is unnecessary and harmful. And what do you think the cause of this, the consciousness level that did not go to the level it's supposed to? Seeing the world through a lens of separation, not understanding your oneness with other species, your obligations to help care for the environment and the earth and those around you, failing to see your interconnectedness, not just with other humans, but with the animals, with the water, and with the air, and with the plants that you are destroying. What we can do to change this? You can feed the world so much more efficiently if you switch to plant-based diet. Stop the mass consumption and mass confinement of animals and all of the harm that it's wreaking on the environment. Start growing your own food. Stop eating so much processed food so much stop the toxic fertilizers that you're putting into the soil the chemicals mm -hmm. that you're using to grow crops grow food locally stop shipping it from place to place and also we can uh, let's say when we make a furniture instead of using trees we can use other materials yes end the consciousness of separation where you see yourself as something apart from the earth because we're a part of the nature yes you are nature um so i uh, also like to ask another question uh, there is the uh, how does it, uh, what, what do you say about the uh, hollow earth what is there there's multiple extraterrestrial species that are inside the earth okay pleiadians and greys yes they have bases there. So where was the, the entrance to that? There's multiple entrances. Uh-huh. You can go through the ocean. There's also a mass cave underneath New Mexico. Uh-huh. Uh, also Mount Chester? Yes. Uh, and Bermuda Triangle? Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, how about this uh, civilization that I'm not too sure, but there's a book about um, 
how to say this uh, specific species. Um, their name is Telos, T E L O S. Are you aware of that? They were inside of the earth at one time, now they are gone. Ah, so what happened to them? They achieved the purpose that they set out to achieve, so they left. So let's say the Greys and the, the Pleiadians, um, they have their base in, inside of Earth as to monitor what's going on and also protect us. And help with your evolutionary process. Uh, so what they do to help? They work on your consciousness and they activate kundalini energy within the body that starts opening you up to higher conscious states. How do they do that? Sometimes they just do it by visiting you at night, making small alterations in your energy field. Sometimes they actually take you and will make an alteration in your DNA. They'll take you in their ship or into one of their rooms. So do they uh, uh, target a specific people? People who are at a specific point in their spiritual evolution. Uh-huh. Let's say those uh, star seeds. Yes, but not only star seeds. And so the extraterrestrial, they can feel our vibration, vibrational level? Correct. And they know if you've contracted to be part of the evolutionary program. Do they um, also, let's say, sometimes appear in their form on Earth? They have, yes. To the people who are ready for their uh, energy. Or if they want to send a specific message. Mm. Um, so right now, Earth is going through this uh, the, the biggest shift that ever happened on Earth? Can we say that? You could say that. Mm -hmm. So what do you feel or what do you say about this shift? It has the potential to be quite magnificent if you rise to the occasion. You have to raise your consciousness level. You have to end the thinking of separation. You have to start treating nature more kindly, more compassionately and each other more kindly and compassionately. You have to stop capitalistic thinking where the earth is just something for you to buy and sell. What we can do to be more connected with, with you and feel your energy? Be mindful of every living thing that you interact with. The birds, the squirrels, the insects, the trees, mm -hmm. the plants. As you're walking, connect deeply with the ladybug you see crawling on the sidewalk, or that you are made of the same thing. You are not higher or lower. Understand that you are no greater than the snake slithering across your path. But let's say if some animals or insects, they can be harmful to a human. So what do you say about that? How we can, you know, have a better relationship with them? Know that they're just serving their purpose. You can protect yourself against them so that they don't harm you. But that doesn't mean that, in most cases, that doesn't mean that you have to do them harm. Even, let's say, mosquitoes. There's things you can do to prevent them from coming you to begin with. Mm -hmm. Of course, if one's biting you, you can slap it. But do we have the right to end their lives? They know when they are biting you that that's usually the end. Oh, so what's the purpose for an insect like that? There are certain bacteria that need to be spread around that are only spread through mosquitoes. So the whole ecosystem wouldn't function without them. They carry certain matter from and, and bacteria from place to place. I see. So now the, uh, my next question is, uh, what is this COVID is really about? The virus. The virus emerged because of there was so much fear-based vibration on your planet. So what is the purpose for this virus? It emerged in response to the fear, mm -hmm. but it also serves as a catalyst. People could use it as an opportunity to shake Sh you Sh out uh -huh. of your ordinary thinking. To shift the consciousness. Correct. Mm -hmm. People were very complacent, people were very set in their ways, and the pandemic helped wake people up shift you out of your ordinary ways of thinking. So how about, what do you say about the people who died during this uh, COVID? Let's say, is this uh, some sort of agreement or, or for other reasons? You never go unless you agree. Mm -hmm. So death is always by agreement. Mm -hmm. So yes, they agreed to go during this time mm -hmm. as part of the 
catalyst part of the message of the, the shift in energy but they decide to go back because they need to have the next experience because they've completed what they needed to complete mm -hmm. in this incarnation oh, I see. so it's like you know um how does it we see those people died from covid but there that is uh, something uh, the true reason is because they serve their purpose on earth this correct time. And they agreed to go as part of COVID, as part of, because they knew what this moment meant for humanity. And so let's say if there's an airplane crash or any that type of accident is always the case, the same type of reason. Yes, a soul's life can never be ended prematurely. Anything else um, if you want to give us as your message today? Collectively, you need to live more simply you don't need to drive everywhere, walk more, use less technology, but also use technology more efficiently and more intelligently. Let it work for you. Not to work against you. Yes. But in a way, when a te technology it has been developed, and then um, in a way that, that will have less time or intention to focus on spirituality. You can distract yourself with technology and then you have less time. You can also use it to do work that you would otherwise have to do, and then you have more time to develop your spirituality. It's all about how you use it. Right. It can help people to do more with um, their true self. To yes, when it's used in, 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 in alignment with the soul's purpose. So let's say, uh, if, in order to connect with your energy, let's say if we go to a park or under a a tree and just lay down or barefoot and we can kind of feel and connect with your energy absolutely that will raise our vibration yes do it often and also let's say this plant uh, those uh, psychedelics those plant medicine like mushroom ayahuasca so they are uh, that type of uh, plant is helping the human humanity to raise our consciousness yes they're one more modality that you can use yeah. they're not the only way but they are one way to experience altered conscious states that make you more deeply connected with, with your own soul and with the realm of spirit yes it's very very profound and uh, it's uh, it's very hard sometimes for the human mind to really comprehend when we're in that altered state Yes, it's opening you up to perception that you don't usually have. Yes, and we can also see things that we normally don't see. Correct. So I uh, felt when I have uh, that when I when I was in the outer state, I s kind of feel or see everything is vibrating. Yes, everything is vibrating all the time. You just don't notice it. It's the very essence of all energy is it vibrates. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, appreciate today's uh, communication, and this is uh, something uh, the message from you is um, will benefit the humanity for us to know more of what we can do from this point. And uh, I'm sure we'll have uh, another opportunity to talk more in the future. Thank you again. Thank you. Right.